Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, welcome, 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 welcome. Good morning, welcome. Go ahead and share. Good morning, good morning, welcome. You know, <laughs> sometimes when we worry about what other people think of us, we never meet our goals. Yeah. When we worry about, when we concern ourselves with how other people feel, when we know we are doing things right and we worry about what other people are doing and how they feel about us, it, we make mistakes. We are not supposed to live by man's expectation. Good morning, good morning and welcome. We are supposed to live by God's expectation. God have expectations for us. And we know. Even if you are not a believer, you know what God is expecting from you. Yes. Yes. And I'm just going to say this. Good morning and welcome. It's day one of our 21 days of fasting and prayer. We are not just fasting, we are also going to pray. Most of this fasting, you're going to be doing it on your own. Amen. To God be the glory. So, if you have decided to join us and you are married, talk to your spouse. That's when the devil show up. Whenever you're fasting and your spouse don't know about it, if you're married... If you're not married, I'm not, this is not, this, this statement that I'm making is not for you. So learn this. If you are a married person and you're going on fasting, even if you wake up in the morning and the Lord said, do a fast and you're not living with your, your husband or your wife, let them know. Why? These are the times when the devil will attack you. So sometimes you have to it's not like you're asking permission you're breaking it breaking it easy to them to let them know many times they want to be a part of it many times god will tell you to do a fasting and you're married and you know that your spouse is not where they're supposed to be and this is what god is doing he's using the fasting that both of you have decided to do to fix things in your home, to fix things in your marriage, to fix, thing, to fix things in your business, to fix things in the family. So as we have joined 
this month of May, we didn't fast in the month of April or March. We we have been preparing for this fasting. It's 21 days and it's not easy. It's not going to be easy. So I'm just going to put it out there right now. It's not going to be an easy fasting. We are fasting for the establishment of the ministry. We are we will be in Jamaica where we are building a church. So we will be on the premises. Amen for service hallelujah glory to god so for those of you who are in jamaica or you are from jamaica and you have relatives there you can let them know that we will be there the flyer is already out amen so i say this to say while you're on this fasting don't worry what other people think of you just allow God to use you. Just allow God to fix you. Just allow God to work it out. Many of you have some issues that nobody can help you with. And God is getting ready to do it for you. Amen. You have tried many avenues and it didn't work out. So now God is getting ready to sort you out. Hallelujah. I'm excited for this fasting. The Bible said we should be anxious for nothing. But this particular fasting, I'm excited. Why? Because I have challenges before the fasting start. And it's challenges that will affect me during the fasting. So I'm excited. Welcome. Good morning. Wherever you're connecting from this morning. Welcome. So please, if you're married, just humble yourself and tell your spouse you're fasting. Maybe they want to join. Yes. Some people have things in their heart and they don't share it. So don't hesitate to say, you know what? El Shaddai Prayer Tower is doing a fasting. And uh, um, I have purpose in my heart. Or the Lord touched my heart to join the fasting. And I want you to know. I don't know if you're interested in joining with me. You know, if you can, if you don't want to do it for 21 days, you can do it for three days. Some people are on medication. And I encourage you that if you're on your medication, eat light snack. Don't eat a big plate of meal. Eat light snack just to take your medicine. Amen. I know a lot of medicine don't work unless you eat. Glory to God. So don't come off of your medication. I beseech you by the mercies of God. Don't stop your medication just for the fasting. We don't want no fatalities. We don't want no. We don't. We don't want no one to say, um, I have to go to the hospital because you told me not to take my medication. Whatever you're doing, do it by faith. So the flyer is out. For the program, it's for three days. And I am looking forward to see, if you're not going to be there, I'm looking forward to see your relatives and your friends. Everyone, even if you are from Dubai, you have family in Jamaica. Even you are, if you are from Russia, you have relatives. Jamaicans are all over the world. And so they watch the broadcast. And they have their relatives and friends in Jamaica. Even friends. Jamaican people are very friendly. So they have a lot of friends in different parts of the world. <laughs> it's true. So, you know, I say this. I encourage you to share the broadcast. Invite your friends. Invite your family members. Invite even the people that you know are going through hard times. Invite them so they can be blessed. Amen. Let us pray. It's day one. We're not going to stress about anything. We're just going to pray and allow the Holy Spirit to flow. Many people, they see other people wearing the prayer cloth on their head or wrap around them. And it makes you wonder what's going on. Listen, people of God. This is a commandment. I'm going to read about it today. From God. Every one of us need one of these. And when I ordered mine from Israel, it took a long time to come. And when it came and I was blessing it, 
and I ordered my oil and my shawl from Israel and I was so happy. So I was just, I cover myself with the shawl and I was, and I anointed myself and I just begin to pray. And while I was praying, the Lord said to me, this is one of your ministry. The anointing oil and the prayer shawl never run out of it. And ever since then, that's how the business of the prayer shawl and the anointing oil began. Amen. So it came a long way. And some people, I'm here to let you know, be honest. Many people, they don't want to purchase anything. They don't want to pay for anything. And as believers, God has blessed us. Many of us, we know God has, God is blessing us. But as believers, we don't want to pay for anything. But I want you to know when Abraham's wife died, Sarah, they wanted to give him the piece of land for free. Abraham said, no, I'm paying for it. As believers, we need to start paying for stuff that we desire and stop expecting people to give us stuff for free. If this is what God gave me, and if this is what I'm doing, if you don't pay for it, how do you think I'm going to be able to buy more to sell other people? Let, let, let's be realistic. Some people don't want to pay for anything. They want it for free. And they're telling you that they don't have the money. You're, you, you are blessed. You're a believer. You're a child of God. And he has been good unto you. If you don't want to get it from me, get it from somewhere else. But every one of us this is supposed to have one of these. And I'm going to read it. It's in the Bible. Some people, they, they don't understand the scriptures. And they see people with things that they think it's style. It is biblical. Amen. So I'm encouraging you. To know your Bible. Know your Bible. Don't speak against what God is doing. Know your Bible. The reason why people speak against what God is doing is because they don't know the word of God. They don't. Amen. There are times when you have to grab for this. When certain issues come. And you're home. You need your prayer cloth. You need your prayer cloth. Don't be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. This is what the word of God said. If you don't know, now you know that every, every believer is supposed. You don't even have to be a believer to wear a prayer cloth. Because it's a commandment from God. You need to know the word of God. So when you see people doing things, you know that it's not mockery. I don't have no time to explain anything outside of preaching. This is where it started. Amen. So let us pray. Let us pray. There are, you, you see, I, I, it makes me uncomfortable. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find the right words to use. It makes me uncomfortable when I see God is blessing some people and they refuse to invest in themselves. They refuse. Come on. Abraham said, I do not want anything free. I will pay for the piece of land to bury my dead. So believers, the same way God is blessing you, it's the same way other people are expected to be blessed. When you see people selling their stuff, if you don't want it, don't, leave, don't talk about it. Leave it. And I speak with no apologies up until today. I'm assuming every member of El Shaddai should have a prayer shawl. I am assuming up until today, every member of El Shaddai prayer tower own a prayer shawl. Even the ones that are not baptized yet. Because they are learning the word of God. They are learning. They are understanding. They are getting a clear understanding of the gospel. Don't just follow. Don't just be a follower. Be a believer. 
We are not kids anymore. So don't just be a follower. Be a believer. And many of the times, sin is what causes people to, to behave a certain way. So when we see people behave in certain way, we, it doesn't bother us. Because we know it's sin. So you might be thinking that, Pastor, I don't know what's going on. I'm not going to worry about your sin. I'll pray for you to get out of sin. Amen. I cannot stop anyone from living their life to please the devil. Because I know many times when people do that, it's because they are in bondage. Many times, oh Jesus, let, let, let us enter prayer and, and shift the atmosphere. Because, you know, lack of knowledge causes people to perish. And I see a lot of people baptized. They have a lot of Bibles. They know a lot of scriptures. And they know how to pray. But yet they are doing foolishness. Foolishness. Meaning that the devil have them wrapped up. Yeah. I'm saying it. I am saying it. It doesn't matter how much scripture you know. If you're not living a life to please God, you're doing foolishness. And I speak with no apologies. Let us go into a moment of prayer. Let us thank God for what he has done and how far we came. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We worship and adore you, Lord. We magnify your holy name. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. To you be all the glory. Thank you, Jesus, for where we are today. Let your will be done. As we have entered into our season of fasting for the establishment of this ministry and the church in the name of Jesus Christ. And as you establish the building, actually, Lord God, you establish your people. Remember those who have stretched for their hands to be a blessing. Remember those who have sacrificed just to be a blessing. Remember those who are paying their tithes, Lord God. Remember them today. Bless them, O oh God. Remember those who are faithfully being obedient to you. Let your will be done in their life as you turn it around for their good. And as this fasting will continue, mighty God, may we continue in strength and your power. We cannot do it without you, Lord. We are nothing without you. So we ask you because all power belongs to you. May we continue in your strength, Lord God, and in your power. We declare upon El Shaddai that it will be well. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, oh God, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness and your mercies. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're about to do in El Shaddai Prayer Tower. We thank you for the people that are about to receive healing and breakthrough. We thank you for deliverance, mighty God. We thank you for new, new, newness. New homes, new business, new beginnings. In the name of Jesus, we decree and we declare it done right now. Lord, we thank you for the new members. We thank you for what you're about to do in them, O oh God. We thank you for what you're about to use them to do in the ministry. Remember the homeless today, Lord God. Remember the widow today. Remember the single mothers. Remember the single fathers, mighty God. Remember those that are not working, my God, my God, my God. Remember that mother that woke up this morning and didn't have enough to give to those children. We ask you in the name of Jesus Christ to remember them, O God. Let your divine will be done for your glory and your glory alone. Remember the sick today. Remember those, O God, who are in bonds, who are in debts, mighty God. Remember them and let your will be done, Lord God. Remember them. Establish your people today, O God. Turn it around. Turn it around, O oh God. 
Give us the strength. Give us the strength, mighty God, to pursue in this fasting. Whatever you have said about us, we decree and we declare right now that it shall surely come to pass. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Even now, O oh God, I cover myself in the blood. I cover myself in the blood. Even now, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Take over. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Take over. Take charge. Take your rightful position among us. Holy Spirit, come and take charge. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. As we declare your name, we thank you. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, welcome to day one of our fasting. Yes. I'm going to read about the prayer shawl. Many of you have the same information. Most of you have purchased your prayer shawl from the ministry. You have the same information. It says the prayer shawl is a symbol. It's a garment. This is what I'm referring to, the prayer shawl. It is a garment. It is a shroud. It is a canopy or a cloak which envelop the wearer both physically and spiritually. So when you see people wearing their prayer shawl, don't judge them. They are being obedient to God. Some of them, they bought ones that were made by other people that didn't use the right fabric or, you know, you can tell that it's, it's not authentic. Amen. But we make sure every prayer shawl that comes from El Shaddai is from Israel. Not because of being extra, but because we have access to it. Hello, somebody. When the woman that had the issue of blood touched Jesus' garment, it was his prayer shawl and she was healed. There are many people who bought their prayer shawl and they said that they were not able to sleep. And they use it to wrap up. And people have to wake them up. Knock on their door. Because they keep sleeping. Hallelujah. But I'm here to let you know. The word of God. Declared that we should have it. And as I'm about to finish this information. It says it's a cloak. Which envelop. The person that wear it. Physically and spiritually. In the prayer and in prayer and celebration, in joy and sorrow, the prayer shawl, which also is known as the talit, it means talit in Hebrew, amen. It is commended blessing given by God. Again. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel, tell them to make tassel on the end. So in the beginning, when they used to wear these things, it didn't have the tassel on the end. It was just a piece of cloth. But when God was using Moses, he told Moses. And this is why you see many of them, they don't have the blue in it. This, this one is the Elijah, the Elisha. This is the Elisha prayer shawl, the brown and white one. Hello. Now, the Bible is reminding us that God told Moses, he says, speak to the children of Israel and tell them to make tassel on the corner of the garment throughout the generations in perpetuity. And to put yes. So now you will see some of them, they have the blue on the end. These are the older ones. When I say older, the Elijah. Elijah prayer shawl was black and white. 
and Elisha prayer shawl is brown because he had the double portion of anointing. People need to know because this is the word of God. So when it's next time you see somebody in their prayer shawl, it doesn't have nothing to do with even if they are a believer. It has to do with the commandment from God that they should wear it. So don't say you don't want it. Because you don't understand the purpose of it. I say this because a lot of people are speaking against the prayer cloth and they don't know the meaning of it. It is a commandment from God. Oh, Jesus. Now, let, let me continue because I'm reading scripture here. The word of God says that to put... <laughs> <it's> <laughs> They should have this, the tassel on the corners. Amen. And it should be remembered in all commandments of the Lord. That you may look upon it and remember the commandment of God. And do them. And that you may not follow the olive tree. To which your own heart or your own eyes are inclined. And that you may remember and do all my commandments and be holy for your God. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. You see, God is so jealous. He keeps reminding us that he is the Lord our God. I'm reading about the prayer shawl. Many of us don't know that this is written in the Bible. It's a commandment from God. We need to wear it. It brings spiritual covering and physical covering. Oh, mighty God. And I could go on and on. He said, you shall make them. And on the four corners of the clothing which you cover. It's in Deuteronomy chapter 22. It's in Numbers chapter 15. This garment is used at all major Jewish occasions. This is why you will see the Jews with their prayer shawl. They know it is written. We need to wear it. God is expect People of God, listen, this is not a joke. So if you don't have one, make sure you get one. You don't have to order it from me. You can order from somebody else, but make sure you get one. Amen. Glory to God. I'm here with it because it can be worn as a poncho. Back in the days, they used to make it like a big jacket. You just throw it over like a poncho. It's wide. No, it, it became cheaper because it's more expensive to wear the poncho. It's like four times the amount of money that this one costs to get the poncho. So now people are, they just make it in just the cloth and put these things on it. And the tassel on the four corners and they distribute it. So Numbers chapter 22, Numbers chapter 15 and Deuteronomy chapter 22 will remind you. It says the Jews, they wear it on all occasions, even when they're going to have circumcision, weddings, and funeral. It originally was a poncho. Yeah, originally it was known as a poncho. Wrapped the extended. It said wrap that extended below the knees later. So this is why it has to be long. It has, they have some, I, I have one and I have a big, very big one. It's like maybe four or five times the size of the regular size. Excuse me. There are times when I need that particular to wrap around me like clothes. I don't want nothing else. It doesn't matter what I'm wearing. So we need to understand that when God wants us to walk in a certain path he will give us directions 
He is using me today to share this with you just in case you did not know. No, they cut them, they sell them. The biblical requirement does not specify the length. So that's why we get, sometimes you see some little short ones, it's just to hang around the neck and that's it. Like a collar. It doesn't come with a specific length. There were no specifics from God, the size of it. He just said, make sure it has the tassel on it. And when you read the Bible, you want, even if you're not living your life to please God, you want to do the things that you see. So it's either you're in or you're out. Amen. Glory be to God. Jesus. Number one. They said the garment is to be an outer covering. And in Hebrew, it's called kasha. Number two, the garment should have four corners. And in Hebrew, it's called kanafim. Hallelujah. On each of the four corners is to be a twizit. Now, this is the twizit. The end that is twist that yeah they twist it up and and tie it a special way. On the four corners there is to be a twist, a specially knotted tassel with shred running through it. So this one is all white. It's supposed to even have the blue that we have to buy separate. So the more the more definition you look for is the more the, 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 the prayer card will cost you. Because the twist, because this don't have no blue in it. So for me to add the twist to it, it's going to make it double the price. You see, even for myself, because the twist is almost the same price as the prayer card without the blue. Because some of them were made with different colors. Hello, somebody. Jesus. In biblical times, Jewish men wore their prayer shawl at all times. Not just as a prayer cloth. The apostle Paul was a Pharisee, but also a tent maker. The word tent meaning prayer shawl. That's, that was his profession. That's how he eat. Paul was an apostle of God. But he was making his own money because he used to make prayer cloth. God provided. Good morning if you're just joining. I encourage you to share. Somebody said, I bought one just like that from you. Amen. God bless you. So Paul was a tent maker. Because... The name, the, because the Hebrew term for tent and talit is the same, many believe that Paul, oh Lord, made prayer shawl, not tent structure. As we know them, the Old Testament, six million Jews could not fit into the tent of the meeting that was set up therefore god gave each his own private sanctuary where they had met with him it was an intimate private space and time set apart from anyone else totally focused upon god this is where the prayer closet as in matthew chapter 6 verse 6 so we need to know these things. We need to be educated. If you are going to be a part of a ministry that only speaks the word of God, you need a Bible-based believing ministry. You need to know the gospel. You need to know what things mean. So we're not only going to read it, we're going to practice it. My God. And it continue in Numbers 15 and 38. It says, speak 
to the Israelites. So these were God's chosen people. Tell them, get your prayer cloth or your prayer shawl. Because the Bible didn't specify the length of a prayer shawl. They used to have some touching their ankles. They used to have some touching their knees. And now they cut it and sell it this way so we can have, we have access. It's affordable. My God. Here, when Jesus Christ was passing through town, this is just a picture of what took place. This woman touched him. She had to sit on the ground because she was sick. There you go. That's a clear view. The woman grabbing the hem of Jesus' garment. Let me show you. A clear picture. The woman grabbing onto the hem of Jesus' garment. Glory to God. So I'm here to let you know, people of God, it's been a long time. It's not just a piece of cloth. It's also spiritual covering. When Elijah met Elisha, he used his cloak. So it's also known as a cloak and passed it over him. He didn't talk to him. He didn't say, hey, come here. God sent me to, to, to bless you so you can take over when I'm done. No. He used his cloak to pass over him. But if you remember carefully in the beginning, when I was reading, it says the prayer shawl is a symbol, a garment, a shroud, canopy, or cloak, which envelop the wearer both physically and spiritually. So it was his prayer shawl. He used to cast upon Elisha. No, he was a professor at a school for prophets. He wasn't a preacher. He was a prophet. Elijah didn't preach. That mighty man of God did not preach. And so when Elisha took over from him, he didn't preach either. There was no preaching going on until we enter the new testament this is why isaiah and jeremiah had so many problems they were prophets they prophesy hello somebody they prophesy they were prophets but when jesus show up on the scene john the baptist only had one sermon telling people to repent that's all he learned in the wilderness. The Bible never mentioned anything about John the Baptist's garment. But Jesus' garment was mentioned. Because he came in the New Testament wearing his prayer cloth. Remember, God gave Moses this assignment in Numbers and Deuteronomy. In the Old Testament. But when we enter the New Testament. Jesus show up on the scene. Wearing his prayer shawl. People of God use wisdom. Use wisdom. When Jesus came. The Bible said all Elijah wear was a leather belt. That's the only thing that set him apart. He was a hairy man with a leather belt. So I presume he will, you know, he maybe wear khaki, khaki uniform, shirt and pants with this big leather belt. And he must have been a skinny person because the Bible said he could run faster than a horse. Every one of us that God used, there is something that sets us apart. It makes us different. Everyone, every man of God or every woman of God in ministry that lived their life to please God, they have been set apart. They have been set apart. Number one, they have powerful testimony. And number two, they do something different. There is something significant about that ministry. It doesn't matter what they look like. Some of, some of them don't even look good. 
And I'm going to say some of us. Some of us, the people that God is using. We don't, we don't. The Bible said we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. The Bible make it clear. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. So Elijah, what makes him distinguish? He was hairy. So I guess he was hairy look like Esau. The Bible said Esau was a hairy man. He have hair everywhere, even on his back like an animal. So I presume Elijah was the same thing. He was a hearing. The Bible said he was a hearing. We're not leaving the scripture. We're going to stay in the word of God. The Bible said he was a hearing man. And he wore a big leather belt. So when people ask, oh, who was it? They say, oh, he wore a leather belt. So they say, oh, that's Elijah. That's him. He wears a leather belt. So you see leather was very important back in those days when adam and eve sin they didn't have any prayer shawl no they were naked but their eyes were not open to their nakedness so once they sinned sin exposed them to their nakedness so once they sinned and their eyes became open. They realized that they were naked. They realized that they were different. From the animals. They had no competition. But the serpent beguiled the woman. And the woman feed the man. Now. When God showed up. When the evening was cool. It was getting cool. The Bible said God called Adam. He didn't call Eve. He said, Adam, where are you? He said, I'm here. God said, I don't see you. He said, but I'm naked. I can't come. God said, who told you that you're naked? So you see, sometimes we link with some people. And these people that we link with, they point out some things that we had no business looking at. And then they leave. They start trouble and then they run. When God asks Adam, what happened? He said, ask Eve, the woman you gave me, she's the one who did this to me. God asks Eve, what happened? Eve said, the serpent gave it to me. Everything stopped by the serpent. How could you allow an animal you see, to, to, to guide you, when you already have God to guide you. Many of us, God already blessed us. But because we want to be like everyone else. When God set you apart, you don't have any competition. No. When God set you apart, there is no one for you to compare yourself to. Just stay in the word. Just stay with him. So now they got caught up. They got caught up. And because they got caught up. Everything went sour. They disappointed God. And God kicked them out of the garden of Eden. They were living in paradise. The Bible said they got the garden of Eden is paradise. So they were living in paradise. So many times we are living in paradise. And we did not know. Until we mess up. And end up in hell. Oh Jesus. Living in misery. Is living in hell. And I want you to know. Hell is real. Hell is not unhurt. We can enjoy a little bit of heaven while we are here on earth. But hell is real. Hell fire is hot. Last night I was looking at the lava flowing like an ocean. And it's all fire. And I'm watching the thing. 
somebody posted it and i'm just admiring the lava this is mother nature flowing flowing miles of fire and it just pops up out of the earth and just flow and it's fire i don't want to imagine what it, i'm not going to hell believe me from heaven and to earth i am not going to hell i'm watching the lava flowing and it flows and it flows and it flows and it's all fire popping out bursting out of the ground fire no one can quench it and all i think about i don't want to know what hellfire feels like because if we are on earth experiencing some part of the world where the lava is bubbling up because of the heat out of the ground and it's fire like liquid fire bubbling bubbling and no one can control it i don't want to know what it feels like to go to hell so while you are here on earth live your life to please god if you watch the lava if you don't if you have never seen the lava the lava google it and watch what happens and it's fire naturally coming up out of the earth flowing like a liquid like a river so i'm here to let you know people of god judgment jesus judgment is not something to play with it's real hell is real hell and i i was amazed to just sat there and look how these people capture the moment and share it for other people to watch it was something else I want you to know we cannot mock God and if we are mocking God many of many people they only pray when they are sick and go to church when they are in serious problems or they call pastors because they know a lot of pastors and and, and pay the pastors to pray for them but that can't bring you to heaven no that will never take you to heaven because you know someone who can pray. That cannot save you. Relationship with God is personal. Salvation is personal. Get your life right with God. Get your life right with God. He cannot be mocked. I don't know who and why God is using me to speak like this today. It's the first day of our fasting. But I want you to know, especially if you are a man or you are a woman and you are up in age, stop playing with God. He is serious about you. Salvation is personal. A lot of young people are dying and they say that they were not ready to give their life to God yet. They want to do road some more. And that's the only way. Some people think the only way they can make it is in sin who told you that i hear a man of god said the most money he has ever made is when he turned to god and opened a business and he flourished more than when he was in sin so if you are watching and you are thinking or somebody fool you that you will never make it unless you are in sin they lied to you because the only way oh god the bible tells us according to first john he said above all things i want you to prosper and be in good health even as your soul prosper it even as your soul prosper first john 3 and 8 it says for this purpose the son of god was manifested that he might destroy all the works of the devil the son of god was manifested the son of god was manifested to destroy some things 
the devil's works. So people of God, it's time to get your life right with God. It's time to get your life right with God. Second Timothy chapter 4 and 18, it says, And the Lord shall deliver me from all, from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. We are not mocking God. We cannot mock God. And we are not throwing words at anyone. This is a wake-up call. Tomorrow may be too late. It's time to repent. It's time to turn your life over to Jesus. It's time to repent. I see young people preaching. I see even little babies preaching, singing, worshiping God. And some old, tough, congregant man and woman refuse to surrender to God. I don't know what they are looking for. You see, I, I didn't come. God didn't bring me for people to like me. No, I'm not likable. I'm not friendly. I'm not sociable. I'm here with the word of God, with the truth. Love me or leave me. I didn't come for people to like me. My name is not Pastor Feel Good, so I cannot make you feel good. I come with the truth. The truth. Jesus said it best. He said, and they shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So wherever you're connecting from today, welcome to day one of our fasting. Hallelujah. Sin will destroy you. And once we have God on our side, we cannot be denied. And nothing can separate us from the love of God. I am persuaded that it doesn't matter what the devil is doing. He cannot change nothing about me. I'm sold out. And I encourage you to be sold out. You see, many of you, God is waiting to bless you. You think that you are being blessed because you are you, 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 you accumulated some things. But I want you to know God has placed some things in some of you that when you open your mouth and begin to speak, demons flee. Demons will tremble. All you have to do is turn to Jesus Christ. Many of you are looking for people to pray for you. God said I already placed some things inside of you. To destroy the works of the devil. When you speak. All you have to do is come. Come to Jesus. It doesn't matter what you did in the past. Even if you commit murder. God will forgive you. Moses commit murder. God forgave him. Elijah commit murder. He killed some false prophet. And God forgave him. It's time to turn your life around. Come to Jesus Christ. There is no repentance in the grave. Don't wait until you are laying on your sick bed. You decide if you want to give your life to the Lord or not. Hell is real. We cannot make friends. With the truth. Because the truth cause offense. People will hate you. Because of the truth. Jesus speak. He said don't die in sin. Don't let sin kill you. It might not sound good right now. Because this, this, this message is coming off kind of strong. So you might not even want to receive it. But go home and think about it if you are at work. Think about it. If you die tonight, do you think you'll go to heaven? Because you can't wake up and, on judgment day to repent. Whatever you do now, it counts. Everything you do as of today onward, it counts. It counts. No one knows what's around your corner. No one knows what's, what tomorrow may bring. So I'm here to let you know. Once you're dead, you're done. 
So be prepared. Are you prepared to meet your maker? If you die tonight, do you think you'll go to heaven? That is my question. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let us pray. I came to pray. I came to pray. The pollen is so bad. Giving me a hard time with my allergies. <sighs> Hallelujah. Let us confess the sins. Many of us, the people that went ahead of us, like our parents, our grandparents, great grandparents, great, great, great. Many of us, we knew things about them or we heard things about them that were wrong. Yes. Let us confess. Let us ask God to forgive them. You know, the Bible said Job, when Job was praying, he prayed for his children that maybe if they sin, that God would forgive them. Job prayed and asked God for forgiveness. So let us ask God for forgiveness of the people that went ahead of us. It could be some grandparents, great grandparents, or our parents. Some of them, they died in sin. They did not, they did not, um, make peace with God. They did not repent. Many of them, they were not even saved. They go to church, but they were not saved. Many of them were never baptized because they were afraid of water. Huh. Jesus. <laughs> many of them, excuse me, many of them were not saved. Many of these people that we were related to that died ahead of us Many of them were matriarchs and patriarchs in the family. But they were not saved. They did evil in the sight of God. They spent all their money doing witchcraft. If we would only find out some truth about the family that we came from. It would bring tears. It's true. Many of them were murderers. Many of them were slave drivers. Yes. Yes. Many of them sold out their own family into slavery. Yes. Many of them were in bondage. All they practiced was witchcraft. All they, they, many of them drink blood. Blood we're not supposed to drink. It's again in Deuteronomy. We are not supposed to drink blood. I came to this country and I hear people talking about blood pudding. There is no, no, no body fluid. Like body fluid. It's supposed to be consumed. Huh. Nothing that came from the body is supposed to be your sweat. Nothing that came from you is supposed to be consumed. So I encourage you people of God. If they introduce you to blood pudding or any type of fluid that came from your body to consume it, it is not of God. It's wrong. It is wrong. God speak very highly against those things. Amen. So let us confess the sins of those that went ahead of us. Let us ask God to forgive them. Many times we hear like other people, our grand, great grand, or some relatives said, you know, our grandfather used to do this, or he used to do that. And it was, not, we now know that the thing was not of God. Let us pray against it, that it don't happen to our children. And we don't fall into that trap. It's bondage. It's true. Let us pray against it. Let us ask God for forgiveness right now. Oh God, we ask you for forgiveness. Many times we do things and we did not know 
it was wrong because that's what we grew up seeing our parents did, our grandparents doing it. We thought it was good. So we practice it, not knowing it was not of God. So dear for Lord, we ask you for your forgiveness. Oh God, we ask you for forgiveness of the things that we do. The known and the unknown. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ask God for forgiveness. Hallelujah. Many of us, we are still connected to the sins of our past generation. We are still practicing it. It's time for us to stop it and separate ourselves. It's time for us to separate ourselves from the sins, yes, of our generation. It's time for us to break away from it, separate ourselves from it. Many times it was some, the, the things that they were doing, hallelujah. There are, there are, there have been some, some women, they tie down another woman's son to marry their daughter. And there are some parents who tie down somebody's daughter to marry into their family. It's bondage. It's not of God. It's called witchcraft. You, to, 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 what you, to dominate to dominate someone, to be with your family member, or to even be with you. It's not of God. And many of the times, these relationships or these marriages end in divorce. Because the person have been dominated to stay bound to that person that is not of God. So today we pray against the things, even the ones that we don't know about that we did. Many of us we sin and we don't even know because we think the things were good. So today we pray. And many times they did things to us. Because they themselves didn't know any better. So today we renounce it. We renounce it. Every evil dedication that they place upon your life. Today we renounce it. Open them out. You don't you see, sometimes some things are happening to you and you don't understand what's happening to you. It's because something that your parents might have done or your grandparents might have done and it's affecting your life. You cannot keep a man. And if you're a woman, if you're a man you cannot keep a woman. Because they, they did some things to you as a baby. And the thing is affecting your life. So today we renounce every evil dedication. In the name of Jesus Christ. Many times you send your children to spend time with relatives. And they do that to them. Oh Jesus. Renounce it. You'd be surprised the things that were the things that were done when you were a baby, done to you. So today we renounce every evil dedication that was placed upon our life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We renounce it. It have to be renounced. It have to. You have to get rid of it. Renounce it off of your children. Mighty God, many times you yourself did it and didn't know. So today we ask God to forgive us of our sins, the known and the unknown. Many people were practicing things that they saw, what they grandparents or great-grandparents did and the thing was not of God and they didn't know until they came to Christ you see this message is not for everybody it is day one of our fasting and this ministry will help you to get your life in order so you can help those around you 
Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now. Today we ask God. To separate us completely. From all the sins. Of our forefathers. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God. Today we ask you to separate us. From the sins, separate us completely from the sins of our forefathers. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. We have to. We have to be separated from this, these things. In order for us to live to our full potential, we have to break true break out break away from the bonds that held our parents back our grandparents many of them were in bondage all your life you know when somebody practice witchcraft that's bondage because that's something they have to pay for some people don't know how to do things naturally all your life is witchcraft and they don't know that it's not of god they think it's okay because these people are using scriptures. God is jealous. So today we cancel every ungodly delay. That will destroy our miracle. Many of us, we are, we, we, we are being blessed by God. And many things that happen in our life, it's only a miracle. But many of you, you can see it in your dreams and it never manifests. So everything that is blocking the delay of the manifestation of the miracle in your life. Today we cancel it. Every ungodly delay in your life. We cancel it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every ungodly delay. We cancel it. We cancel it. By the blood of Jesus Christ. We cancel every ungodly delay. Many of you, your delay is your home. Your delay is your job. Your delay is your husband. Your delay is your business, your ministry, your children. Many, oh Jesus, we cancel every ungodly delay right now. We come against it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You know, there are some of us, we, we, we have everything going great with other people. But when it comes to ministry, we don't like some pastors. Why? God placed a pastor as a gift in your life. And some people don't like their pastors. And they can't explain why. It is not of God. It is not of God. So today we ask him to hasten his word. According to the word of God, it says he will hasten his word to perform it. So today we ask him to hasten his word to perform it in our life. Many times we receive prophecy and the thing is delayed. It's been delayed. So today we ask God to hasten his word to perform it in our life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh God! We come before you and we ask you today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to hasten your word, to perform it in my life. Open your mouth and declare it. Oh God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Open your mouth and declare it. Oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We ask you. To hasten your word to perform it. You have said it. Lord you have said it. And today we ask you. To hasten your word. In my life. To perform it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Today we cancel every delay of the enemy. Every ungodly delay. We cancel it. 
every ungodly delay we cancel it many of you you have had so many delays in your life and your children you watch your children experiencing delay today we cancel every ungodly delay in the name of jesus christ of nazareth we cancel it my god jesus we cancel it every ungodly delay in the name of jesus christ we cancel it and we pray that he will profess his word to perform it in our life in the matchless name of jesus christ you know many times the person that's fighting your progress is somebody close to you but today we're going to separate ourselves from the enemies of our progress the enemies of our success many times you know and you said um I, i'm i'm just gonna pray but today we pray we ask god to separate us from our enemies of progress Today we ask God to separate us from the enemies of our success. Today we ask God to separate us. To separate us from those that are fighting against our progress. From those that are fighting against our success. We separate ourselves and we scatter them by the blood of jesus christ some people need to be scattered they need to go we scatter them we scatter them those that are fighting a baboko shut up jesus those that are fighting against us we scatter them by the blood of jesus christ you cannot be friends with the people that are fighting against you. It doesn't matter how faithful they are to you. The Bible tells us that the enemy only come to kill, to rob and to destroy. To rob, kill and destroy. That is the plan of your enemy. To rob, to kill, to destroy. So today we separate ourselves from among them. Many of them are related to us. Many of them are, oh God, Koshaya. Some of them are close to us. We have to separate ourselves in order to see the blessings of the Lord. So today we scatter them by the blood of Jesus Christ. We scatter them. My God, somebody go ahead and share this message. Ooh. We scatter them. You see, surprisingly, many of you, you don't even go nowhere. You work home, work home. Yet, there are things happening in your life and you know the thing is not of God. The things that you are working to the most towards, that's the thing that's leaving you. And today, by the blood of Jesus Christ, we scatter every enemies of progress. It doesn't matter who they are. We scatter them in the name of Jesus Christ. Those that are fighting against your progress, we scatter them by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah mighty god listen to me these prayer points it works with the level of your faith if you don't believe don't pray because we are praying for results to come we are praying and asking god for results we are expecting results so by the blood of jesus christ we will never in agreement with our enemies. Those who are fighting our progress. They are our enemies. And we are not in agreement with them. We scatter them. Hallelujah. You know. Many of you. You desire great things. And you set yourself in alignment. You pay tithes. You sow seed. Yet the thing is not happening. 
So today we pray that the desires of your heart, according to Psalm 37 and verse 4, he said he will grant you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in him and he will grant you the desires of your heart. Many of you, you delight yourself in the Lord fervently, faithfully, and yet nothing is happening. And so today we pray and we skiata those who are responsible for our downfall. We skiata them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Mighty God. When you desire something from God and the thing don't come to pass and you set yourself in alignment, mighty God. Hey! In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh God! We scatter them. By the blood of Jesus Christ. We scatter. It doesn't matter who they are. Amen. Somebody said they have been asking God to remove their enemies. And suddenly all their friends are gone. They started to lose friends. God don't lie. Many times the very people that is fighting us are close to us. You see how close Judas was to Jesus? He even kissed him when he sold him out. People can't kiss you if they're not close to you. So many times the very, the very person that is planning your demise will kiss you. So today we pray for breakthrough concerning your life. Today, this May, this month of May, we declare that whatever God said about our life, it shall surely come to pass. In this month of May, whatever God said about you, it will come to pass. Open your mouth and declare in this month of May, Sister Claudette, whatever God said about your life, it will surely come to pass. Open your mouth and declare it. Declare it. Whatever God said about your life. Sister Alicia. Open your mouth and declare it. That whatever God said about you. It shall surely come to pass. Open your mouth and declare it. Open your mouth and declare it. Saskia, Lorda, whatever God said, open your mouth and declare it. Whatever God said about you, it shall surely come to pass. Open your mouth and declare it. Petronia Bailey out there in New York. Open your mouth and declare it. Whatever God said about your life, it shall surely come to pass. Whatever God said about your children, then is Lindsay. Whatever God said about your children's life, it shall surely open your mouth and declare it. it shall surely come to pass. It shall surely come to pass. I have seen Bailey open your mouth and declare it. Whatever God has for you, it will never be taken away from you. You will live to see it. You will live it. Your children will live it. Open your mouth and declare it. My God. Jesus. Paul in God. Whatever God said about you. Declare that it shall surely come to pass. Whatever the Lord have said about your life. Open your mouth and declare it, Nikisha. That whatever God said about your life, it shall surely come to pass. Declare it open your children. Open your mouth and declare it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Sister Claudia. I hear the Lord said I should tell you it's not too late. My God, my God, my God. Open your mouth and declare it. I hear the Lord said it's not too late. Jesus. 
Jesus, open your mouth and declare it. Whatever God said about you and your children. Yes, Wilfred. Whatever God is saying about you, it will happen. It will happen. It might not happen yet, but it's about to happen. God don't tell lie. Yolanda Brown, whatever God said about you, it shall come to pass. And they cannot stop it. No matter what your enemies do, your secret enemies are doing, it will never stop your blessings. Mighty God. We decree and we declare divine manifestation in the month of May. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh God. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Now we're going to pray. And this prayer point is a long one. Amen. Sister Debbie Eversley, I want you to pray like you have never prayed before. I know you have been praying. But today I declare that you will pray like never before. God is about to do something. Oh God, I want you to repeat after me. Oh God. Let there be a, let there be turbulence, rearrangement, revision, reorganization, and rerouting of situations and circumstances in order to give way to the manifestation of my desired miracle in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh God, let there be turbulence, rearrangement. Revision, reorganization, rerouting of situation and circumstances in order to give way to the manifestation of my desired miracles in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh God! We have to pray. I came to pray. So whatever you're doing, it's time to pray. Mighty God. Today, we declare, Oh God, let there be turbulence. Yes, we know what turbulence is. It's not only when you're in an airplane, there is turbulence. Many of you are living in turbulence. So today we are going to ask God for turbulence. We're going to ask God to rearrange some things. We are going to ask God to revision some things for us. To reorganize some things. To rewrote some things. Some situations and circumstances in order for manifestation to take place. For the things that we desire. The miracle. So we are asking God today. To let there be turbulence. You see when Daniel prayed for 21 days of fasting and prayer. And he forgot about the prayers. One day the Bible said he was down by the river with his friends. And Daniel didn't hear any noise. His friends heard noise. Turbulence. And they ran away. So God could have a one-on-one -on -one with Daniel. So there was a turbulence. They heard thunder. Mababoko Shaya. They heard thunder. So today we ask God. To let there be turbulence. Rearrangement. Revision. Reorganization. Mighty God. To rewrote. Some situation. And some circumstances. In order to give way. Today we are asking God to make a way where there seems to be no way. In order for us to have a miracle. To experience a miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mighty God. Hey. Glory to God. 
Oh, Jesus. We need to pray. So if you don't like to pray, today is not your day on this platform because I'm here to pray. And I'm giving you the prayer points so you can pray. Declare, O oh God, I bind, plunder, and render to nothing everything that destroy my testimony, everything that destroy my prosperity, and the force of my prosperity in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind it and I render it to nothing. Everything that is set to destroy my testimony. Everything that was set up to destroy my miracle. I bind and I plunder and I render to nothing. Jesus. My God. People of God, you got to be serious to receive your breakthrough. So we continue to pray. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh God. You see how long I don't go live during the daytime. Listen, it's time for you to pray and take a moment to share this broadcast. Many of you are saying that you cannot find me when I'm live, but today we are here to pray. Many of you think I'm going live and you can't find me. No, I'm not going live. So today we are here to pray. Today we pray and we ask God, oh God. Today, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind and I plunder and render, render to nothing everything that was set up to destroy my testimony. Every plan of the enemy to stop my miracle. Every plan of the enemy to stop my prosperity. I bind, I plunder and render to nothing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes. You see, many times we are waiting on people to pray for us. Your prayers are powerful. Your prayers are very powerful. So I would encourage you to pray. Oh, Jesus. I would encourage you to pray. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God. Today we pray that the God who answer Elijah by fire will answer me in the name of jesus christ amen spirit of the living god today we pray that the god who answer elijah by fire will hear and answer my prayer spirit of the living god today i pray that the god who answer elijah by fire by thunder will hear me and answer me in the name of jesus christ open your mouth and pray spirit of the living god open your mouth and declare it in the name of jesus christ remember when the children of israel were slaves in egypt at first they were blessed and then the person that brought the blessing died. So they became slaves. So to, yes. So they actually became slave because they were living off of somebody else's blessing. Hallelujah. So today we pray. God sent Moses for them to bring them out of bondage. They were living like royalty. And then the person that died who held the blessing. And so the new king that took over didn't know them so they were they became slaves god sent moses to snatch them and they were at 
a place where they were in a rock and a hard place. They didn't know where to go. They were right there by the ocean and the enemy was coming up after them. So God gave Moses the wisdom to stretch forth his hands towards the sea and the sea parted. So that was an instant miracle. So today we pray, O oh God, the God who answer Moses speedily at the Red Sea will hear and answer us by fire in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh God, the same God who answer Moses speedily at the Red Sea, he will hear and answer us today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Today we pray, oh God. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Bible said, Jabez prayed to God and asked God for favor. He pray his mother named him Jabez because he brought great pain to, to birth. Today somebody need to give birth. Today somebody need to give birth. Today I came to let you know it's time to pray. And the God who changed the situation of Jabez will change your life by fire in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible said God showed him favor. Everything that he asked God for, he received. So today we pray, today we pray that the God who answered Jabez will answer you in the name of Jesus Christ. The, ja the God who answered Jabez or Jabez will answer you. He named Jabez because of the pain that he caused his mom. Some children are hard to birth out because greatness is in them. So now this is the greatness. He received favor of God because he was bold enough to ask for favor from God. Declare, O oh God, Spirit of the living God, the one who changed the situation of Jabez, hear me now and answer by fire in the name of Jesus Christ. O oh God, the one who changed the situation of Jabez, hear me now. Hear me now. Hear my cry, O oh Lord. Hear my prayer, O oh God. Hear my cry, O oh God. It's day one of our fasting. And I refuse to compromise the word of God. So I pray that you came on this platform to pray today. Amen. My God. You see, there are some situations that we have to fix and according to the book of Romans it reminds us that we have to call those things that be not as if it was we have to call some things into existence so you might not have what you desire but call it out today so today we're gonna ask God the God that quicken the God that cricket, the God that give us the unction to function, to call out those things, even though it's not so, we're going to call it out in the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to call it out right now. We're going to call it out today. We're calling out to the God that cricket all things. So by the blood of Jesus Christ, which cricket things and call it things that be not as if they are, we ask you today to answer our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We ask you today, O oh God, to answer our prayer. 
We're calling it out, oh God, even though it's not so. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Today we pray that everything that was set up against us to be nullified. Everything that they set against us. Every ill-spoken word. Some people, they say some negative things about us. And today we're going to cancel it. We're going to nullify it by the blood of Jesus Christ. We're going to nullify every negative word. Every ill-spoken word that was released upon our name. Our children's name. We're going to nullify that today. Mighty God. Jesus. Many of you, they label you. Ah, Jesus. They label you wrongfully because they don't know you. They don't know your story. They only know your weaknesses when you were hungry, when you were desperate, when you didn't have enough. But today, we are going to nullify every negative word that they said about you and your children in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh God, today we pray that every, every negative thing that was released upon our name, mighty God, every negative thing that was designed against our life to be completely nullified in the name of Jesus. Oh God. Some people don't want to pray. They want to wait until I'm done. They call for prayer. When I'm done praying here, I'm tired. When I'm done praying here, I don't have energy. Unless God used me to send you a message or call you, I'm not worth talking to because I already prayed. I'm prayed out. So I encourage you, if you're here, pray. Pray. Let us pray against every negative thing that was designed against your life to be completely nullified in the name of Jesus Christ. We cancel it. Many of you are fighting some warfare that is not even yours. You're fighting for other people and the enemy is attacking you. You're praying for people and they're attacking you. The demons that they're fighting, it attack you. Almighty oh, God. We pray against it right now by the blood of Jesus Christ. We pray against it. Many of you have prayed for people and it turned out against you. Today we cancel it by the blood of Jesus Christ. We cancel it. Many of you, they label you. They label your children because there was a time when nothing good was happening for you and the devil had you and they brand you. They brand your children. But today, today, we destroy it. Every evil label that they fashion against you and your children, we destroy it by the blood of Jesus Christ. Many times, some people used to do some things in the past. And you know the thing is not of God. Know that your eyes are open. They don't like you. They used to have you. To use you. To abuse you and your children. To destroy you. Some of you even know your children are, 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 are victims of that circumstances. Some of you, yes. So today we pray. That every evil that was done to you and your children to be reversed and go back to sender in the name of Jesus Christ. Every evil that was done to you and your children to go back to the sender, mighty God. Every evil that was done to you and your children, we pray that it go back to the sender in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every evil act that was done to you and your children, it shall go back to the sender. Somebody declare back to sender. 
back to sender back to sender we are not here to play we are here to pray back to sender whatever they did to slow you down to slow down your children it shall go back to the sender in the name of jesus christ of nazareth every plan of the enemy to destroy you and your children it shall go back to the sender back to sender mighty god back somebody declare back to sender many of you the things that are happening to you and your family it's not even from near it's from afar it was sent from afar so everything that was sent to you we send it back Sometimes some new people enter your life and you might be thinking it's from God because they are so nice. Those people are on assignment to destroy you because they are working for someone. So today we send it back. Back to the sender in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Everything that was a setup to stop you. We send it back to the sender. In the, by the blood of Jesus Christ. It go back to the sender. Every power against your life. Uh, to destroy you. It's going back to the sender. Mighty God. Jesus. According to Romans chapter 4 verse 19. It says. And being, and being not weak in the faith. Be con. He considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. My God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I know many of your case is not even close to Sarah. Sarah's womb was dead. She was in her 90s. Many women are still in their 50s and they, they're not able to give birth. Many are in their 60s and it's impossible. But yet women in their 70s are giving birth. Your case is different. Somebody go ahead and declare my case is different. May the Lord bless you. Genesis 18 remind us it says Sarah was 90 years old. 90 years old. Nothing was happening for her. When she received her prophecy, she laughed. But yet, the word of God in her life came to pass. Hebrews chapter 11 and 11 tells us that through faith, Sarah herself received strength to conceive and was delivered of a child. Hallelujah. Was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful. Who had promised. God don't lie. God never lie. And whatever he said about you. It shall come to pass. My God. Today I encourage you to stand on the word of God. Exodus chapter 23. It tells us. It says. There shall nothing cast. Dear young nor barren in thy land. So you see, God is getting ready to do something miraculous in El Shaddai prayer tower. I don't know if you're playing um if you're playing body on both sides, but may the Lord intervene in your case. I pray that the Lord will intervene in your case in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. As you pray by faith, may the Lord intervene. In the name of Jesus Christ. The angel said you will bring forth your own Isaac. So those who hear will rejoice with you. So God is getting ready to bless you. And those who have been waiting to hear you. Or to see you suffer. It's not going to happen. Because your case is different. People of God we are getting ready to go to Jamaica. And the building is not completed. We need help. We are going down there to have service. Everything is not in order. The bathrooms are not done. And we have enough time to get things in order. So I ask you. 
I beseech you by the mercies of God to stretch forth your hands and bless the ministry so we can do some more work so we will be comfortable when we are there to use to have service in that building amen yes somebody was asking if there is floor yes there is floor you're not gonna walk on dirt you're gonna walk on concrete it's not completed but the flooring is already there amen many of you are waiting to see when we get there to see what it looks like i encourage you to stretch forth your hands we are gonna have to rent chairs and tables and it's kind of hot now in jamaica we're going down there in a couple of weeks the flyers are out so i encourage you to be a blessing so we can have what we need to do the work of god some people in jamaica they have jobs and they are part of the ministry i encourage you we will have service on friday during the daytime we will have service on saturday during the daytime we will have service on Sunday during the daytime. We're not planning any night service. If there will be night service, it's not on the program. Amen. So I encourage you, if you have been selected to be commissioned in the ministry, make sure you are available for commissioning. Amen. If your name has been mentioned to be commissioned to lead in the ministry, Make sure you are present when we are there so that you, you, you'll you get whatever you're supposed to get. Glory to God. Don't wait for me to leave and then you try to contact me. Amen. Make sure you have oil in your lamp so at the right time you'll be okay. Glory to God. Now, I'm here to let you know. You can go ahead and use Zelle, PayPal, or Cash App to be a blessing to the ministry. It doesn't matter how small. We are asking you for your charitable donations. We are still doing our charity. And for those of you who are in covenant with the ministry, remember your covenant seed. Hello. We are still doing charity. Remember El Shaddai Prayer Tower needs all the blessing it can get now. We need help. We have to finish that project. And while we will be there, we will be needing your assistance. Those of you who won't be able to make it, we are looking forward for a contribution from you. So we will be sustained. We will be able to, when it's time to break our fast, there will be victuals in the church. Food. Amen. While I was praying earlier, the Lord revealed to me that we're going to need a pulpit. Yes. We will need a pulpit. So we might have to rent a pulpit. Because the one that the church will have, it will be made in the church. So we might have to rent a pulpit. So chairs, tables. We, will, we already have electricity. We already have water. We will need to get some more work done on the building so we can plug in fans and all of that amen hallelujah now it's a 21 days of fasting and it's one meal per day not multiple meals so if you're on the fasting with us it's one meal you eat one meal per day i'm not gonna do communion on the live no it's your personal space that you're in to break your fast this is your relationship with god for those who won't be able to come when we are on our journey i am encouraging some of you to join us in prayer we will be needing some prayer warriors to be praying while we are there some intercessory prayer for 24 hours yes on that saturday we will be needing some intercessory prayer warriors to be praying for the ministry while we will be there but only for the saturday and i think that's the day of the commissioning amen glory to god people have got to listen you know many of us we are supporters of a lot of things now we are building the church and we are going down there we need help 
be a blessing and watch what God will do for you. He will open doors that you never thought possible. Once again, this has been Breakfast with Jesus. I'm encouraging you to be blessed. Be blessed of the Lord and be steadfast with your prayers and believe that there's nothing impossible with God. Amen. There is nothing impossible. There is nothing he cannot do. So while you're here, if the Lord touch your heart to be a blessing to the ministry, don't hesitate. The number is 860-634-8557. Be a blessing and watch what God will do for you. Glory be to God. Be a blessing. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to come back tonight, but pray my strength. Amen. Have yourself a blessed day.